Developing software for the cloud brings a lot of problems. Your local environment is always missing something compared to production. The main problems are dev environments are hard to keep up to date, Kubernetes is complex to set up, learning Kubernetes requires a safe space, testing configuration setup between your environment and the containers is difficult. What if we could just fix all these problems with a single solution? Rancher Desktop gives us a safe place to learn and develop. The beauty of Rancher Desktop is its simplicity and ease of use. Getting started, we're going to need to install Rancher Desktop. The install is relatively simple on Windows. You just download the installer. It'll restart a couple times. Check the installation docs for other operating systems, but they'll go even smoother than on Windows. Rancher Desktop is a Node app, which means that no matter what, if you use Windows, Mac, or Linux, you get the same experience. Windows gets the same goodness by using WSL2, which is installed automatically by the Rancher Desktop installer. When you run Rancher for the first time, you get to choose the version of Kubernetes you want. You probably just want to stay with latest, but you can also just choose the stable. Once you select it, it will automatically be installed for you. It's so much easier than setting up an enterprise cluster. After a few minutes, your network will be ready and you can see the cluster is loaded. Now that we have a fully configured Kubernetes, we want something local that we can play with. Jason Yi created this amazing guide in a repo we can use to prove everything works. Rancher Desktop was super nice and installed all the tools we needed to get this started. As long as you already have Git, we're going to start by cloning the simplest K8 repository and then using kubectl, which was installed for us. You can see here the commands kubectl apply f simplest K8. This is telling Kubernetes to apply these configuration files inside of this folder. It runs quickly, but once it runs, you can see that we created a deployment, a routing service, and our API service. But how do we know if it works? If you go to https j shooter.rancher.localhost, you can see that the game is loaded. And with that, you can see that we installed routing rules, we installed the API service, and we installed the UI code, all with a single command. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more of this content. So now let's take a step back and look at what's in these configurations. Starting with the routing rules, you can see we have an ingress which is where incoming traffic goes it has a name it has the host it wants to be hosted at and it has the prefix for the url so if you wanted a specific route under this so if you wanted it to go to game you could have it go to game here and then there's the port that it'll be listening on and you can update this to any other port if you have something else listening on port 80. Then here in the back end, it says service. So that's gonna point over to this service. And here it's pretty simple. There's a name, a namespace, and the app selector. Again, it's gonna tell it which port it wants to listen on and which port it'll send traffic to. Finally, what we have is a deployment. This file's a little bit different than just telling Kubernetes what we're actually deploying. This is telling it how to deploy it. So besides our name, our namespace, we also have replicas here. So you could actually load up multiple instances of this. If you set it to three, it would keep three instances of this one game running for it to be load balanced. The only other thing here is that there's the name of the container and then the image version that's going to be running. The resources section shows how much of your memory and CPU will be used. Check out the link in the description if you want to know more. Now it's time for us to build our own containers. I'm just going to use .NET Core to build a web app. And mine's running in .NET 6, and I'm purposely not going to enable Docker here just yet. If you don't use .NET, don't worry. The only thing we're going to use is the ability to create containers easily. In .NET Core, what you can do is you can actually right-click on a project. Once you go down to Add, you just have to choose Container Orchestration Support. We're going to choose the only option, Docker Compose. At this point, you have to use Linux as the operating system. And what that did was it created these Docker Compose and Docker Ignore files for us. We have the Docker file here, and we have our Docker Compose here. All I did was navigate to my YouTube app directory. Now I'm at the same directory as my Docker Compose. Rancher comes equipped with two runtime settings. You can choose Docker D and Mobi, or you can choose Container D. When you're set to Container D, you're actually going to use NerdCTL and not Docker. Luckily, NerdCTL and Docker both have the same command output. So if you just replace NerdCTL with Docker, the same command should work. I'm just going to run this. You can see it's going to build our app. It's going to create the container, and then it's going to load all the resources up. It took a minute to finish, but you can see if we look through these steps quickly, it took the Docker file, it downloaded the images required, built our app, and then it pushed the image. You can see here it's created a container. In our Docker Compose file, you can see that there's no ports exposed here. And here you can see that we're exposed on port 80. This is going to cause a problem because I have IIS loaded, so it's going to listen over the top of this app. But we're going to fix that really simply. All we have to do is define ports and tell it we're going to listen on port 8000 and it will forward it to the app on port 80. To bring down our network that we have with Docker Compose, all you do is do the nerdctl compose down. 
And that'll remove all those resources. Since we updated our file, we'll make sure we save it. Our container was created, and we can come over here to localhost 8000. And we can see our web app, and we know our web app is working. When we come look over at Rancher, though, it's not doing anything, just because we're using Nerd CTL to use this rather than Rancher. And we can fix that pretty easily. Not many people use Docker Swarm in production. Kubernetes has created a tool to go from Docker Compose to Kubernetes. It's just called Compose. The way I'm going to install Compose is by using this curl download from GitHub. Curl doesn't generally work with PowerShell, so I'm going to open up a Git bash. If you want to see how to integrate that, you can go check out my video, link below. So from here, you can download it, and then installation is actually pretty simple. In the command, you can see that I downloaded it to the current directory. I'm at dsource. Here at my dsource folder, you can see that this compose.exe came. What I like to do is I like to build a tools folder and set it up in my environment variables. You can see here I put my compose.exe in that tools directory. On Windows, in your start search, if you type set environment variables or edit environment variables, and then on the system properties window, you have to click environment variables. Here we get to a window that's pretty unfriendly, but there's a section here called path, and you're going to want to edit that. At the bottom, I added my D tools directory. If at this point you had a terminal open like I do, you have to fully close these. Environment variables only update when a terminal is relaunched. If there's anything open in a session, it will keep the old environment variables. So here, once again, I've navigated back to my Docker Compose. The command couldn't be any easier. We're just gonna run Compose Convert. Here you can see it created two new files, a service and a deployment. And if we look at these, we can see here that we have our service with the port of 8000 now because it's pulled our port that we defined earlier and it's redirecting that to the 80 in the container, just like we had done before. There's some extra annotations here, but we don't need to worry about them. Again, here you can see the deployment, and it looks almost identical to the one for. But for those of you that remember, we have an ingress here that we don't have in this new version. We're going to need one. So now that I renamed this ingress, let's give it a name. I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste that everywhere. Here we're going to want to listen on port 8000, because that's the port we're listening on right here. We already have YouTube web app listed everywhere else. So now that we have our ingress ready, let's go ahead and apply these. And what we're going to do is, again, we're going to do kubectl apply here. I'm going to give it the current directory as our folder path. And you can see here it created the deployment, the ingress, and the service. And we don't care about these validation errors because it's trying to look at these other files and we just don't care. Looking over here now, we can see that a namespace of default has the YouTube app, but we can see that the, that the app got built over at YouTube web app. This is actually gonna be a problem because Rancher can't pick up anything on this default app. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these. You want your image to show up here under this case, just like this Jade shooter is. Coming back to the command line, we're gonna have to build our containers again. But in order to do this, we have to do something kind of funny. We actually need to move our containers up to here. This Docker file was designed to be run at a higher level, and Microsoft puts it in the project. It's actually designed to be run at this level right here. So now that our Docker file is at the same level we were at before, we're going to use nerdctl to push this image to our repository. We're, we're assigning it the namespace k8 so it doesn't go to that default, and then we're also tagging our name here. Now at this point in our k we can see that our YouTube web app is here. And now we're gonna check our deployments to see if it's up and running. We can see here we have zero of one deployments running and it's three minutes old. So even though we have the container out there, there's still one thing missing. We need to add this image pull policy of never. This is something specific to Ranger Desktop, but it'll save us all the time in the world. All I'm gonna do is save that change. Then I'm gonna rerun the cube CTL apply. We can see here that it updated that configuration and didn't touch the other ones. In running our git deployments command, you can see that we now have a website that's ready for us. Coming up here to port forwarding, we're hosted at YouTube web app port 8000. And so even though we're hosted on port 8000, it's doing all the redirects for us here. So all I do is have to hit it at that same app and we're good to go. Again, you can see that we set this up, forwarding to port 8000. It's the container that's running on port 8000. The ingress is receiving it on port 80 and then sending it off to your app. And this is great. We made some deployments. Really, it could be easier than this. I'm going to have to start by cleaning up everything I put out there. We're going to have to delete the deployment, the ingress, and the service. But it's really important because what we're going to do is going to recreate these things so we can't have them out there while we run the new command. So last time we ran, we used compose convert this time we're going to use compose convert C. So I have the compose convert up. Since we added the dash C, let's just see what happens here when we run this. 
So you can see here another directory was created. It's now got a Helm chart in it, which this dash C does for you. But how's that better? At the command line now, all we have to do is type Helm install awesome, and then we're gonna do Docker compose. This is actually the name of my deployment. I, I just wanted it to be something different than YouTube test app. So you can see that I created it here and it wasn't created before. Here now, rather than applying a service, the ingress and everything else, all we had to do was run that one command and then this Helm install. We come over here, we can still see that there's a 8,000 here on that YouTube web app. When we rerun our site, you can see it's taken me back to this HTTPS secure. This was actually deployed by Helm this time. Now you can see we're getting a page 404 not found. We fixed this earlier, but we have to fix it again over here in Helm. Remember before we had to set this image pull policy of never? We're gonna do the same thing inside this Docker Compose. So we're gonna go find the one that's being used by Helm, find the deployment file, and set the image pull policy to never. Using Helm list, I can see that my deployment was called awesome, and we're just gonna make sure we delete awesome. Just that fast, it was uninstalled. You can see that there's nothing there now. So we're gonna reinstall with the file we updated, remembering to include our local port. It now works again. And we're just gonna delete that really quick and see that we can no longer hit our page. It's gone just like that. One of the great things about working in containers is the resources are only there when you want them to be, and they update quickly. If we go and reinstall it there, it's already found it and it's already running again. I hope you agree by now that Rancher Desktop is amazing, but I haven't shown you the best part. The coolest thing actually happens when you close it. You can see right now, I'm using quite a bit of memory on VMMEM, and that, what that is, is that's all these containers and images that are running in Rancher. When I quit Rancher Desktop, what's actually gonna happen is these resources are gonna crawl down and eventually disappear. When you're ready to run Rancher again, you can just double click the desktop app and it'll spin back everything up as needed. You only use the resources when you need to. You may also be interested in my other videos on test automation using Playwright. I have the JavaScript and Python videos. Thanks for watching and keep being awesome.